Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is going to be a preview of the best of three series in the Atlantic Division as we look at the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins against the Hershey Bears. Please continue to subscribe down below or up above in the EGU's widget to keep us growing to a goal of 250 or more by the start of June. These two teams are very eerily similar as you look at them. Both of them don't have this whopping oh my god guy that pops off the stat sheet for you, but they have a very great mixed blend of players that got them to the 4th and 5th position respectively to be in the postseason this year. As the uh, Bears and Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins both played 76 total games, the Bears finished with 78 points, as did the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins. So both of these teams, obviously, there's been a lot of series, and this is what makes a great playoffs when you have a lot of series coming in that look like they can be really close. It's been like that in the Kelly Cup playoffs. I cover all three for my channel, the, the Calder Cup playoffs and the Stanley Cup playoffs. There's been some close games, even after blowouts in the first game, that the team then would bounce back and blow out that team, and then it goes back and forth. So it's been interesting. But when it comes to this series, I think the biggest storyline is Louis Deming. Louis Deming is having success. Obviously, they lost the second game, but a lot of that didn't have to necessarily do with the Ming. It had to do with the play of Pittsburgh. But Louis Deming is up with Pittsburgh because of their injuries in net. So, because Louis Deming is up with Pittsburgh because of their injuries in net, now you have a problem at the AHL level, which is obviously nothing that Pittsburgh, the, like, there's nothing you can do about that. I'm not, you don't blame anybody for that, but you do have a problem in cage for your postseason, not because you don't have two talented goalies, you just have two guys that aren't there yet, per se, that are inexperienced in Napier and in DeOrio that you don't really want starting yet in a postseason for you at this level. You can have them mix in, get them continue to both growing and going, but they're both rooks, they're both guys that are inexperienced at this level. And they're both guys that would be getting thrown into the gauntlet. So hopefully one of them can pull a Connor Ingram AHL style game and do as good as he did at the NHL level for the Preds. Because obviously coming in with Louis Domingue in net and the way he's able to take pressure off of his defense, obviously he's not the sexiest name at the NHL level. He's one of the best guys in hockey, uh, the funniest dudes out there when you can see him in interviews and all that crap. But uh, he's a guy that's pristine and always has been good at the AHL level. Not having that veteran status guy in cage, I think, is really going to hurt them because obviously in cage for the Hershey Bears, it's the exact opposite. You have a guy that is still young, growing, and talented in Zachary Fulcale, but I would have to assume they're going to go with the starter of the veteran whiz, Phoenix Copley, who's similar to Louis Domingue. Both haven't had the greatest. Copley's had a little bit probably stronger, I would say, has had a stronger NHL career with a little bit more staying time for continuous staying time than Deming. But they both have been way more consistent at the AHL level. We have the AHL veteran in Copley still with the Hershey Bears. I think that honestly gives them the edge because when the teams are very even, I'm a big let's look towards the goaltender and let's look towards the defense. Where obviously with these two teams... They both have pretty good defenses. Obviously, Cody France and uh, the veteran, <clears throat> um, he's a guy that's more knock guys off the puck and supply stuff in the offensive zone. Not the sexiest stand-up defender, but Lucas Johansson makes up for that as being a very good stand-up defender. Alexiev's very skilled and growing still. Um, obviously, Michael Kempe um, is a very solid guy, but he's not down there anymore. mekarath has been very impressive for them as well and will stand up for anybody. So you have guys that mix in greatly with the very good talent of Alexi, of the very good talent of Johansson Franzen, who's a very good playoff style player. Same with McElrath. So I think because these the, the Hershey Bears really do build their team up with great uh, playoff style players. And then if you go to the forward court, Vecchioni plays with that snarl. Uh, Joe Snively, who's obviously back down after getting some time with the Capitals, has been one of the best plus minus guys, plays a great two-way game. Uh, Shane Gershus obviously plays with Snarl. Great guy to have for the postseason. Protus is a great guy to have for the postseason. Same with Scarbosa. They got a lot of guys that really play with that extra Snarl and grit, which you want to see in the postseason. Not like the stupid after the whistle BS that you don't actually fight and you get minors for that don't do anything for anybody. But I'm talking about when these guys actually lay on the hitch, knock the guys with the puck. The Hershey Bears do have a lot of guys like that. Now, in comparison, I must say, it's not like Wilkes-Barre doesn't have guys like that. If we look at Wilkes-Barre, 
they do got one of the hard, harder working guys in the AHL and Michael Chaput, who's a very good guy. That Drew O'Connor can really knock guys off the puck. He's just a rookie that's more unproven. Pustinen and Nylander are more skilled guys and not the best in the defensive zone. And then you got Zahorna, who's going to be a key piece. You have to have those big guys do really well here. Kyle Olsen, who can obviously um, knock him down um, when needed. So I think, obviously, Devane is a guy that's a stand-up for these team guys. So you might see him in the playoffs mixed in more. But I do think with the veteran experience of Hershey, guys that have been in the league for a couple of years combined with the great playoff, I think, valued roster having the Gershuses of the world the pros protuses of the world the Scarbosas of the world and especially on defense when you have the Francis of the world the Mecca Reyes of the world I think that's really going to help you when their goaltending veteran Copley's down there where in contrast with Wilkesbury even though they were the wee bit really the two teams are even they don't have that and their defense has guys like Ricola who's very good at jumping up on the play, but not the best stay at home. Cam Lee, who is still learning how to be more consistent of a stand-up defenseman and learn his central role at the AHL level, has had a very solid season. But I would say Fadun and Bartoski, um, Barkowski, excuse me, have been better than Lee. So it's about seeing how those guys do. Ranky has been very good this year. So I think these teams are fairly even, but I do think the veteran. Uh, status push and the fact that they just have a roster that screams playoff style of bashing guys off the puck and being able to just play through you I would have to go with the Hershey Bears in this one because of that and the fact that they actually have their goaltender in cage the veteran Phoenix Copley so I would lean the Hershey Bears in this one as this is the last best of three series preview for the Calder Cup playoffs. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Please subscribe down below or above on the East user to keep the channel growing to the goal of 250 or more by the start of June.